My name is Akina Kublau and I have been diagnosed with vitiligo. Vitiligo is an autoimmune condition that affects the pigment of your skin. Um, about 1% of the world population has vitiligo. It's not something hereditary and there is no known cure or um, reason that causes it. No known reason that causes it. In 2016, mid or early, around early mid 2016, I started noticing some small dots on my hand, like around my fingers. Um, I almost thought it was um, like oil splashed on my hands from um, cooking or something like that. So I didn't really pay much mind um, until I started to see it on the other hand. Um, very tiny dots. Um, so yeah, again, still not paying it much attention. And eventually when I noticed it starting spreading around the tips of my fingers, I went to a dermatologist and we ran some tests and she eventually told me that it was vitiligo. Strangely enough, I had to do blood work and stuff because a lot of people who have vitiligo, um, sometimes there is an underlying condition, um, could be thyroid or other autoimmune conditions. So my test came back negative. I didn't have any of those things. Um, and I guess we just, had to manage it and do consultations and that kind of thing because there is no known cure or anything that you can really do to get rid of it. Um, like I said, it started appearing in around 2016 following, um, well, I don't want to say following because like I said, there's no known reason that you can have it. But studies have shown that it is caused by stress. Um, a lot of people who have gotten vitiligo have said that it's because um, it, it came afterwards a very traumatic incident or something that would have happened in their life. So in 2016, I was, um, in 2015, sorry, late 2015, I was injured on a job and um, it was around 2016 or so I started seeing it happening. Um, again, I don't know if it is that, but that was one of the most difficult times for me, you know, going from working full time, being very active to then being at home, you know. Um, it was a kind of major transition for me. The um, well, it was a it was a knee injury, very minor, um, but I think it could have possibly been one of the triggers because even though the physical injury was minor, the mental impacts of it, you know, like I said, um, I work for. An, uh, an airline um, and it's a job that I loved I something that I wanted to do my entire life since I was a child um, and I guess that fear of okay hey I may never be able to do this again you know yes I'm a mother yes I'm a wife I have other things that I do but um, that um, internal stress of okay hey maybe I'm, I'm gonna lose this thing that I taught at that time I thought it was the one thing that um that made me who I was in a sense you know um, like I said very early on I think obviously you know like anybody when you start seeing stuff you google it right so I started googling um, spots on your hand um, white spots all over your body um, and little things would come up about vitiligo so you know you go through that whole crazy spiral on the inside of okay oh my gosh you know i'm gonna we start seeing pictures of michael jackson popping up and you say oh gosh no i'm gonna be a white lady in two months you know um so i tried i guess to push that at the back of my mind saying no this could never happen to me eventually when i realized okay this thing is getting worse um and i went to the dermatologist i think even day two, um, the dermatologist as well, she recognized that this is something sensitive because they deal with this, I'm sure, with other people as well. Um, and she told me that people that have vitiligo, one of the things, because there is no cure, the treatments for it is really just mental stuff, you know, um, therapy, psychological stuff, because it does impact you mentally, having to go from um, knowing yourself one way to then looking in the mirror and seeing yourself in a totally different way. Especially, like I said, working for an airline, being in a job where um, people would see me, it's based around image quite a bit. Um, it was very difficult um, because even though they prescribed creams and stuff, I was hoping that it would work, but it never really did. A lot of it was um, steroid oil creams and it would burn and that kind of thing. So I just stopped. I tried um, to change my diet a lot too because 
you know, Googling again, doing a lot of research, you'll see that they say, okay, maybe if you change your diet, it would help. Um, it didn't really help. Um, I would try to meditate, um, pray a lot. Of course, well, I have a big faith. I'm a Christian, so, you know, um, they would tell you, the whole, you know, pray about it, um, this and that, anoint yourself with oil. <laughs> you know, I'll do all of that. But um, I guess it just keeps, it keeps spreading. And I've come to embrace that maybe this is um, just who I am now and just who God wants me to be, you know. Um, you know, funny enough, in the beginning, it impacted me a lot. Um, I remember I had a conversation with someone um, at my place of work, and I don't think they were coming from a bad place. I think it was just ignorance. And they said, um, you know, we are not sure with how customers would react to your skin. So, you know, they wanted me to go to a dermatologist and that kind of thing. And um, I remember leaving there in tears. I came home and I told my husband that I felt, I felt dirty, as though they were scorning me in a sense, you know. Um, I have a 12 year old and a six year old. My six year old told me once that, mommy, I, I want daddy to pick me up from school because every time you pick me up, the children would ask me, um, what's that your name, mommy Han? So I said, does that make you sad? She was like, no, I just don't like, when, I just don't like when they ask me, you know. So that hurt me a lot to know that, um, she would feel that way um, and just so many other times you know sometimes simple simple task you I'm in a gas station put in gas and someone would approach me and say you know you should drink celery or you should do and whereas people might be coming from a good place it does um, affect me in a sense where okay like I can't I can't hide because generally my nature is one to kind of you know push back but now I um, it's funny because it has made me unable to hide in a sense but it has done something to me on the inside where because I could no longer hide it has really brought out a boldness in me to kind of focus on who I am more on the inside you know because now that this I focus I guess on exterior image so much in my life um, that now that I could no longer be that perfect image of what perfection is is really an opportunity now for me to focus on who who is who's the real me you know to show my daughters okay um mommy didn't let her skin define who she was she didn't let this make her feel as though she wasn't beautiful so that true beauty and who i am is really on the inside of me you know i have learned that i was meant to stand out um, all my life I've been very shy you know um, a co-worker told me recently um, that if I look back she, she told me go and look back at your pictures from um, some years before and you'll see that something in you has changed so it has it has showed me that it's okay to stand out I don't need to hide I don't need to feel bad um, I joke and say sometimes that maybe this is God's sense of humor, you know, his way of saying, oh, you wanted to hide? No, I'll give you something that people will see you. You can't hide from this. Sorry. My biggest change in myself is my confidence and also my empathy for others as well. Um, because I went through something that nobody else could understand people would always say girl you know i don't see this i you, you saying that i don't see that you know you know you you look just like yourself to me but i know how i feel so because of that it has given me an empathy a, a, i think a bigger sense of empathy for other people so somebody might be going through something and people would say girl no that small thing get over that but nobody should be allowed to tell you how something should make you feel because only you know uh, you know how that affects you so my confidence but more so that sense of empathy for other people and what they're going through my husband has been very supportive he is one of the people that say says you know um i don't see that you know this or that and we joke um sometimes and say that by the time i'm 45 he'll have a white woman so he'll be the first person to marry one person but end up with two separate people say so marry a 
black togla girl and your, you know, later on in life you get a white lady. <laughs> so we joke about that, but he um, he has been very supportive, very protective of me as well. You know, um, if people make a comment or something, he would look at them in a kind of way. He's much bolder than I am, so he would he wouldn't hesitate to tell people off to say, you know, no, don't excuse me, you know, that kind of thing. My advice to people going through challenges similar to mine or even different would be, you know, um, it's okay to, to go through it. In that, I mean, you know, a lot of times people would tell you, okay, um, pick yourself up, you know, get over this, um, pray about it, um, do this, do that, seek counseling. Okay, yes, all those things are great. But I think now, especially, you know, going through a pandemic, um, just encouraging people that it's okay to feel, you know, it's okay to go through stuff. It's okay to, I think if I was, if I allowed myself to feel when I was going through my injury or just other things in life, and if I allowed myself to feel, I probably wouldn't have this condition today. But it's because, you know, we walk around sometimes putting up such a strong front. You know, we think we have to be strong for everything and everybody. We think we have to suppress everything. And then eventually it manifests on the outside. A lot of autoimmune disorders are caused by stress. Um, and a lot of that comes from us trying to put on a show, you know. So I think just encouraging people that it's okay to feel, to know that you might think that you're in this situation alone, but you really are not. There is somebody else going through something just like that. Somebody else going through something bigger than that, and they're still making it, you know? So allow yourself to feel, be gentle with yourself, you know? And just take it one day at a time.